Are you brewing a red deck? Are you, like many others, tired of using the same old removal spells? Are you building on a budget? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you have found the right place because today we are breaking down some of my favorite underrated budget red removal spells. As you well know by now, this video is brought to you by the EDH Jank Center, your source for everything commander and everything jank, and I am your host, Jordan. Now let's get into it. So for starters, I wanna say that on this channel, we always focus on highlighting budget, janky, or underutilized cards because we believe every card deserves a chance to shine. So yes, there are probably definitely better, more efficient spells out there. So if you'd like to use those, feel free. Luckily, deck building is subjective. Hopefully in this list, you'll find some hidden gems that'll help you spark some creative deck building choices. All that being said, here are some of my favorite sub $1 removal spells in red. All right, first up on the docket is Acolyte Hybrid. Two and a red creature Tyranid human from the Warhammer 40K pre-cons. It has Heavy Rock Cutter. Whenever Acolyte Hybrid attacks, destroy up to one target artifact. If an artifact is destroyed this way, its controller draws a card and it's a 2-2. So this card was featured in the first episode of our podcast, the EDH Jank Center podcast, which you can find here on this YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. And my co-host Cress and I, we were geeking out about the ability name and it, it was a great time. You should go check that episode out. But when I'm budget building, something I'm always on the lookout for is repeatable effects. This is because it's so much more efficient to get two to three uses out of a single card than include three different removal spells in a deck list. If you would normally run a few artifact removal spells, then by including this card, we're opening up an additional slot in our list for something else. Something that might be left on the cutting room floor otherwise, which I always love as a deck builder. Like most removal in red, we're focused on destroying artifacts here, but unlike a lot of red removal spells, this is stapled onto a creature's attack trigger. This means that if we can get this thing in for damage, which is easy enough, we can be sniping multiple artifacts throughout the game with one card. Hey, 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 quit your yelling and listen close. I know that this means that our opponents will be drawing cards, but I think that's actually fine because I'd rather remove the clear and present threat than worry about something I haven't seen hit the field yet. Maybe I should do a whole video on the Warhammer 40k pre-cons because there were a lot of like cheeky cards that I feel like flew under the radar from that set. Anyways, let's move on to our second card of the day, which is Awaken the Sleeper. Three in a red sorcery. This is from Phyrexia, all will be one. It says, gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. If it's equipped, you may destroy all equipment attached to that creature. There are a slew of these act of treason-esque cards out there. And honestly, I feel like there's a new variation in almost every single set that comes out. This is no exception, but has a really cool ability as an added bonus. So we get to steal a creature, but if that creature is equipped with something problematic, the sword cycle anyone, then we can yeet it into the yard where it belongs. Then attack our opponent to make them pay for waving that sword of feast and famine around in our faces. Oh, and another fun thing you can do with this spell is if you have a sack outlet on board, you can sack the stolen creature before giving it back to your opponent. Mean, for sure, but very dope for us. And this card is literally cents on the dollar. Perfect for those 10 to $30 brews out there where every cent in the list counts. And now we're moving on to Blood Frenzy. This is one in a red instant from Tempest. And I'm gonna read the Oracle text here because this is old as hell. Uh, it says, cast this spell only before the combat damage step. And it says, target attacking or blocking creature gets plus four plus O oh until end of turn. Destroy that creature at the beginning of the next end step. Now, this is a cheeky selection that I had never seen before researching for this video, but I absolutely love it. A nice little pump spell that we could use on our creature if we were trying to go out with a bang, but I think it's way more effective as a defense mechanism. Say someone's swinging at us with something that we don't really like he, we cast Blood Frenzy, give it a pump, but then that creature gets sniped at the beginning of the next end step. But the strat that I enjoy the most is using this as a surprise buff to a creature that is swinging at another one of your opponents. This will hurt both of your opponents in that the defending player has to deal with a creature that has four more power than they thought initially, and the attacking player will be losing this creature at the end of the turn. That's a best of both worlds situation right there, baby. Hannah Montana would be proud. Up next is another old boy. It's Cinder Cloud. Three red red instant from Mirage, and I'm gonna read the Oracle text again. It says, destroy target creature. If a white creature dies this way, Cinder Cloud deals damage to that creature's controller equal to the creature's power. So I know five mana is a lot for a removal spell, even when you're building on a budget, but this is the sort of card that I think exemplifies what this channel is all about, because despite the mana cost, this is 
Pretty cool and fun. It's not like other red removal girls because it straight up destroys a creature. And on top of that, if that creature happens to be white, then we're dealing some damage to its controller as well. I think it'd be fun in a deck where we're changing the colors of creatures constantly. That way we can make any creature white and watch the damage rain down on our opponents. All right, now we're gonna move on to yet another old man. It's Dwarven Driller, three and a white creature dwarf. This is from Judgment. It says tap. Destroy target land unless its controller has Dwarven Driller deal two damage to them. I wanna start first by saying that we do not condone land destruction here on the channel, but I am also devoted to inclusivity, so we're gonna talk about it. The other thing that Red likes to destroy that aren't artifacts are lands. So if you're wanting to destroy some lands, you shouldn't, but if you did, I think Dwarven Driller is a nice, decent, noble even way to do it. Because essentially this is a tap Target opponent loses two life card, but when combined with burn or group slug or aggro strats where life totals are low, then we can start putting the pressure on and depleting resources. Again, you shouldn't do this unless you and your play group are fine with being huge meanie butts to each other, which can be its own kind of fun. But uh, yeah, tapping and untapping this is pretty good too. It's kind of all I got to say about it. We're gonna move on. Two Fiery Confluence, two red red sorcery. This one's from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan pre-cons. It says, choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Fiery Confluence deals one damage to each creature. Fiery Confluence deals two damage to each opponent. Destroy target artifact. Well, 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 would you look at that? It's another thing that I dearly love on this channel. It's utility, baby. I think this is fully worth the mana cost just for the fact that we get some options on this card. And I'm sorry, in my script, I wrote Optinos, which I think is really funny. Anyways, the Confluence series are all really great because they allow us to choose all three options or choose one mode more than once. We could destroy three artifacts, deal six damage to each opponent, or deal three damage to each creature or any combination of those. Not much else to say. I just, I love cards that do stuff. And this one, yes, yeah, does stuff. So moving on. Two Mog Salvage, two in a red instant. This one's from Modern Horizons 2, and it says, if an opponent controls an island and you control a mountain, you may cast this spell without paying its mana cost. And it says, destroy target artifact. Pretty simple tech, but I think this card is worth an include just for the fact that usually someone's controlling an island in a game of commander. And if you're running red, you're probably running mountains. And it's the same as someone running red elemental blast. So in other words, it's simpler than you think to make this a free removal spell. Also, if no one's running islands, Quicksilver Fountain is your best friend. Now let's talk about one of my favorite cards on this list today. It is Horde Smelter Dragon for red, red creature dragon from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Commander. It says fly Flying, and you can pay three in red to destroy target artifact. Horde Smelter Dragon gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is that artifact's mana value and it's a 5-5. Much like Acolyte Hybrid, this is a creature that removes stuff for us. And as a result, it is one of my favorite cards I came across in the research for this video. Repeatable removal is the name of the game, but it also pumps the dragon whenever we destroy something. And it's already a flying 5-5. Pretty cool beans if you ask me, and uh, yeah, I suggest running it in Zerda or Agatha to get that activated ability reduced as much as possible. Now let us halley on here to the ninth card in our list, Latula's Orders. One in a red, Enchantment Aura. This is from Prophecy, and I'm gonna read the Oracle text because it is also old. It has Flash, which means you can play it anytime you can play an instant, and it says, Enchant Creature. Whenever Enchanted Creature deals combat damage to defending player, you may destroy target artifact that player controls. I know I'm repeating myself a lot here, but uh, repeatable removal is dope and useful, especially for building an efficient deck. This is a low cost flash speed, which means instant speed enchantment that we can throw onto an unblocked attacker to not only deal combat damage, but also snipe something problematic. Attached to things like Ginger Brute, for example, this will just be removal on a stick throughout the game. Nothing not to love here. Now let's move on to our last card of the day, which is Megaton's Fate. Five and a red sorcery from the Fallout precon decks. It says, choose one, disarm, destroy target artifact, create four treasure tokens, or detonate. Megaton's fate deals eight damage to each creature. Each player gets four rad counters. So am I the only one who read this as Megatron's fate at first? And then I was like confused because I was like, wait, this is Fallout. Doesn't make sense. There would be a transformer. And then I, you know, reading the card explains the card. So 
there's that. Anyways, this is both a removal spell and a board wipe, which is so sick. This card takes the shape of the game, which I love. We need spot removal, go for it. Need to wipe the board and incidentally mill people with rad counters, it does that too. And it's got that sweet, sweet nuclear flavor of the Fallout sets, you gotta love it. And just like that, we are at the end of this week's video. What color should I explore next? What are your favorite red removal spells? Did I miss anything? I'm always down there in the comments with you guys, so come on down and have a chat with me. And hey, listen, if you'd like to get extra entries in our monthly Discord giveaways, win prizes in our monthly deck building contests, and play spell table games with me and my co-host Cress every month, check out our Patreon in the description below. We've got lots of awesome ways to support. And if you want to snag a Pyramid Designs playmat through our affiliate link, check that out in the description below. If you use our link, you get 30% off your purchase. And for those who may not have the funds but still want to be part of the community, you can always hop in our Discord completely for free and join our wonderful community of jank lovers. Another free way to support us is by liking and subscribing to the channel and following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at EDH Jank Center. Alright guys, I'm out, and I'll see you on the next video.